Hey guys, this is me, Kevin Murphy, on my channel called Narcissistic Abuse, learning who I am again. Today I want to talk about narcissistic fleas and how us uh, narcissistic survivors um, will start picking up certain traits that the narcissists in our life have maintained in order to maintain control over us and um, get their needs met. Please like and subscribe to my videos. I will be on my on my channel more often now that I have a little bit more time and um, I'm choosing not to <laughs> cancel my channel. So, um, so narcissistic fleas is really what what it is. It's you picking up certain behaviors, attributes, and um, behavioral traits that the narcissist in your life or the narcissist that used to be in your life used to used to do used to have so for example your narcissist may have been um you know rage or um curse people out in order to get their narcissistic needs met or get that narcissistic supply um you have seen or witnessed that kind of behavior work for that narcissist. So it's behavior that has been reinforced. It's behavior that has been, um, that has worked for them. So you, whether this narcissist is your parent or this narcissist is your spouse or this narcissist is your significant other or your friend, you have noticed that they have gotten some form of narcissistic supply or their needs met by being manipulative, controlling, raging, name calling, things of that nature. The problem is we start to become something that we're really not. So that person that we that we see raging and cursing cursing people out and going off and throwing a temper tantrum, that's the kind of person that they are. But we start to develop those those attributes because it worked for the narcissist and because and, and uh, I would say that this is more of a common trait of people who are raised by narcissistic pa narcissistic parents more than just being with a narcissistic um, partner. So this message is more geared toward people who have been in the home of a narcissistic parent or have seen narcissistic parents um, rage be manipulative, be controlling, be possessive, and trying to get their needs met. Um, if you find yourself as an adult who didn't grow up with narcissistic parents, but you happen to have a narcissistic spouse or narcissistic significant other, this message is not really, really geared towards you, but this message is more geared toward people who have gr grown up in the narcissistic household. So... For example, you might have a narcissistic mother who triangulated their, you know, triangulated their children, um, has a codependent husband, which is the dad, and that codependent husband is working to get crumbs from that narcissistic spouse. So that narcissistic spouse might demand that the um, that the uh, codependent husband is home every day at six o'clock and cooks dinner every night for she and the kids. And if that doesn't happen, then that narcissistic mother is going to fly in a, into a narcissistic rage. She'll start manipulating him. She'll start trying to control him. She'll start trying to do all this other stuff. And what the codependent husband will do in order to keep peace he will he will try to do everything he can to make that narcissistic spouse happy so the children are looking and observing this behavior take place and that narcissistic um that narcissistic mother is you know may resort to physical violence uh, verbal insults, psychological insults, mental insults. And so this is all the behavior that the child knows. The child knows, malad has developed maladaptive ways on how to get their needs met because they saw that it worked for the narcissist. So as a child, you're not knowing that 
this is narcissistic behavior. You're not you're not realizing that this is toxic behavior. You're realizing that this is this is the appropriate way to get my needs met. This is the appropriate way for me to get, you know, to, to express myself and to be heard. And this is not an appropriate way to be heard. This is not an appropriate way to express yourself or to find, you know, to get your needs met. So, but this is what the child grows up learning because of the of the dynamics and the the things that they've noticed the narcissistic mother do. So, um, as I said yesterday, the narcissistic mother, or you may have a narcissistic father, whoever the narcissist is in your life, that narcissistic parent demands undying loyalty. They demand that you give them undying respect, undying, you know, unconditional love, no matter what they do, they can, they, they can abuse you physically, verbally, mentally, psychologically, no matter what they do, they want to be number one. And they have trained their children to make their narcissistic parent number one. So this is how the cycle continues because as chill, you know, as children of narcissistic mothers and fathers, we start to observe this kind of behavior. We see it's working for the narcissist. So if we're not careful as children, we start to take on those kind of tendencies. We start to take on those kind of, those kind of uh, attributes. And then we may, if we're not careful, we may even become a full-blown narcissist ourselves. So a lot of people who I've uh, who I've um, heard from in my emails or who have commented in the comment section on, on the channel have you know wondered if they themselves were the narcissists um, because of the fact that they've been exposed to this kind of behavior because of the fact that they have learned this learned this behavior and that they have also um, acted and behaved in ways like the narcissist. And my answer is, you know, you're not the narcissist. The, the fact that you have awareness and the fact that you feel bad for being manipulative, for trying to control people and trying to be possessive of others is, is, the, is, a, is, is the right step in the right, is, is a step in the right direction because you have an awareness. You have a sense of consciousness that your behavior is not okay and that you're looking for answers and you're looking for ways to try to change the way that you deal with things. They're coping mechanisms, but they're dysfunctional coping mechanisms. So this is why we make these channels. This is why we give our advice because we want to be able to help other people heal and be able to go no contact if they have to. And, you know, we're we're not de we're not designed to we, we we were not designed to be a slave to the narcissist or to worship or um cater to the narcissist everywhere that's not what we were designed for that's not our that's not our purpose on this world our purpose is to create healthy relationships with other people, to be a light, to, to truly be a light to the people that, that are in our lives and to truly um, glorify the relationships that we, that we find ourselves in. And we can't do that with a toxic person. We can't do that with narcissistic people. And that narcissist may also tell you that, you know, say, for example, you have empathy and you are a compassionate person and that narcissist sees that in the child, that narcissist will tear that child down and tell that child, oh, you're, you're, you're weak, you're, you're a pushover, you're this, you're that or whatever, and will break that child and break them of their confidence and break them of their, um, of their self-esteem because that narcissist is jealous. That narcissist wish they had that same compassion. That narcissist wish they had um, a personality, a real personality, not a false self. The thing is about the narcissist, they have a false self. They have a false mask. And every time they're around someone, they have to constantly 
put on that false self and put on that false mask because they don't know who they are. They don't, and, and the real self and the real person that they are, they don't like that person. There's a lot of shame associated with their real self. There's a lot of guilt associated with the real self. There's a lot of embarrassment associated with, with the real self. So what happens is when that mask slips and you notice, is that, notice when that mask slips, there's hell to pay because that narcissist hates the, the person, the very person that they are. They hate everything about themselves. So it's very important that if you were raised by a narcissist and you're noticing that you are raging and you're behaving in ways that you observe your narcissist and you have the, 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 the cognitive ability to recognize and the consciousness to recognize that this behavior is wrong, that this is an opportunity for you to do something about it. This is an opportunity for you to seek help. This is an opportunity for you to seek therapy. This is an opportunity for you to get yourself together because you're not that narcissist. Another thing that came to mind yesterday after I made the video last night is that a lot of people, a lot of children who were raised by narcissists will emulate the narcissistic parent to get what I call emotional crumbs. So that narcissist will, will toss you an emotional crumb here and there. And that narcissist, that, that, that child of the narcissist is like, you know, euphoric because they are getting crumbs of love, crumbs of unconditional love. You know, you have the narcissist telling you that no other, no other, no other woman or no other guy, man will love you like I do. Like that's pure BS and that's manipulation. And that's that's their way of trying to control you and keep you in that place of obedience and that place of um that that place of 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 trying of of of, of control because they want to have complete control over you. They want to have control over what you put in your mouth. They want to have control over the friends you have. They want to have control over what school you go to. They want to control who your spouse is, who your mate is. They want to control every aspect of your life. And once you snatch that control and control away from them, or once that mask slips and you recognize that, then that is when all hell breaks loose. So, um, what I'm trying to say is like, it's very important to recognize when you are about to rage, recognize when you are about to try to manipulate somebody to get your way. You're trying to control somebody to get your, get your way. You're trying to, um, you, you know, you lose your temper or you try to, um, resort to violence or resort, resort to other ways to get your needs met. There's other ways to get your needs met or other ways to express yourself other than trying to um, hurt other people physically, verbally, mentally, you know, psychologically or, or th things like that. And trust me, the, the, the little bit of crumbs that the narcissistic parent gives you is what it is. It's not real love. It's, it's just crumbs. Think about a Thanksgiving dinner. Once you've sat down and ate a nice Thanksgiving dinner, you feel full and you feel you feel satisfied, you feel satiated. And you're not going to want to get any more food for the either either until later that night or sometime, you know, the next day. With a healthy parent, the 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 kind of love that a healthy parent gives their child is almost like the, the Thanksgiving dinner that you get on, you know, on, once a year on Thanksgiving. That parent gives you an abundance of love. That parent gives you an abundance of care and nurturing and um, unconditional positive regard. So you don't feel the need to constantly seek validation from that parent because they have given you enough nurture. They have given you enough positive regard and they're, and the, the, the kicker is the positive regard, the nurture, and the care is is ongoing. It's consistent, whereas the narcissist has you starved. Like you are accepting crumbs of a cake as your Thanksgiving dinner, and so guess what? 
you're starved out and you're constantly going to them for validation. You're constantly going to them for love. You're constantly going to them for those crumbs. And that's what they want. That's they want they they are not going to be bad all the time. And this is where this is where the cognitive dissonance comes in. Because we we try to psych ourselves up and say, oh, well, the narcissist is not that bad because yesterday they came to my football game or um, this this evening they, they they fixed my favorite dinner. All of that's done by design. That's done to keep you on this leash. It's done to screw with your mind. It's done to screw with your, your with your reality. It's done to gaslight you and to get you to deny your experience with that narcissist. So this is why it's it's really important to stop denying what has happened to you. Stop denying your experience. Quit, you know, um, trying to be like the narcissist. I don't care what they say. I don't care if they tell you that, oh, you're acting soft or you're you're acting like a girl or you're acting like a punk or you're going to let so-and-so and so get away with talking to you like that. Like if, if you know who you are and that is the person that God has designed you to be, then own it and be it. And doesn't matter what that narcissist says, doesn't matter what that narcissist has, you know, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Like you, it's, it's, it's your life, it's your skin. You need to own it and be comfortable with it and screw what they say, screw how they feel. And if, like I said, if you have to go no contact and, you know, just to heal and to better your life and to, you know, be a, be a better person and be more confident, you do what you need to do. You do what you need to do in order to in, in order to be your best self, to honor God, to honor yourself and to and to be a better person, because you can't be a light to anybody else or be a light to, to it, it, you can't be a light to anybody else if you're not going to be a light to yourself. And sometimes the best way to be a light to yourself is to cut toxic people out of your life, even if those toxic people are your parents. Even if those toxic people are your siblings, even if those toxic people are is is a is a grandparent or um, a cousin or somebody like that, so it's very important to recognize what your boundaries are, recognize what toxic behavior looks like, and to also recognize that the way that your narcissistic mother or father or parent the way they got their needs met by trying to control and manipulate other people is not an appropriate way it, it, and to, to get your needs met. The way to get your needs met is to calmly express yourself and communicate communicate what it is that you need from someone else. And if you're not aware of how to do that, this is why it's important to go to therapy. It's important to ask for the assistance and ask for the help that you need in order to heal. And part of that may mean dis it may mean distancing yourself from that narcissistic parent. So this is a video. This was a video on narcissistic fleas. Please stay tuned for more videos as I continue to make, um, as I continue to um, make, make some, make some more. If you guys have any special requests or any kind of videos that you want me to make, please email me. My email will be at the, in the description box. Um, if you have any questions in regard to my channel or any of the topics, please feel free to email me or leave a comment in the, below in the, um, in the comment section. I hope you guys have had a wonderful Monday and I hope that you guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much. And please subscribe and like these videos. I'll talk to you later. Take care.